Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday Live. I'm super excited to be back in my studio again this week because, of course, as many of you know, I've been away at beautiful Coral Bay for the last couple of weeks. So it's absolutely wonderful to be back on deck with you all. And yesterday I had a question about creating art for the outdoors. And I was actually thinking about what I was going to do today and what I could do that would be um, really relevant and really interesting to you guys. So creating art for outdoors is what we're going to look at today um, with Powtex. And it is a question that I get asked quite a lot in terms of the durability of Powtex for creating artwork for out, outdoors. So one of the magnificent things about um, the Powtex Ultimate Medium is that one of its properties is that it is weather resistant. So that means that you can put any of your artwork that you create with Powtex outside. So super exciting, opens up a whole world of possibilities in terms of what you can do and what you can create. So the person that contacted me yesterday was actually from a school and she's looking at creating some wonderful art totems for outside. And so, of course, when you are working in a school, you want processes that are simple to use um, and quick to apply. So again, perfect for Powtex. So please hop in and say hi if you're here. I know a few people are back on deck and Robin's just um, saying hey and welcome back from your holiday and I sure did enjoy it, Robin. So uh, thanks for that. And um, yeah, so if you're here, pop in, say hi and make sure as you go that you ask any questions that you have. I may not answer them straight away during the chat because I've got quite a lot of um, different things to take you to today in terms of images and things like that. But if you do have any questions, I will ensure that I go back over them after the live and answer any questions that you do have. So please ask. And of course, if you're watching the replay as well, um, you can certainly ask any questions that you have. So Powtex, it is weather resistant, super easy to use because it is water wash up. And so it is perfect for creating art for outdoors. And uh, that's what we're going to be showing. So Powtex, like I say, is weather resistant for all your outdoor creations. Now, um, of course, while I was away, I had to um, come up with a way of, um, you know, taming the boredom while I was um, traveling in the car. And so I came up with this new thing, car art. And this just shows you how simple it is to create forms with Powtex. And it's relevant to outdoor form because you can actually create large wire sculptures. Of course, you can create small sculptures as well. But if you're looking to do large forms for outdoors, then you can create large forms using wire, um, and something to cover the wire over with. So depending on the size, you might want to do the armature using rod, like metal rod, and ensure that you're anchoring uh, the surface into a sturdy base so that if it is going outside, it is not going to blow over. So these are the considerations you have to have when you're doing art for outdoors. So you might want to just give some thought to that and how you're actually creating your form. But while I was in the car, I made these super simple um, armatures that I'm going to do a couple of small sculptures with. And because of been on the beautiful Ningaloo Reef and we're doing our travel theme at the moment through Australia, um, I am going to be doing some artwork around the ocean theme. So what I did on the way home in the car was one of the things that I saw while I was up there, which was awesome, was whale sharks. And so I created a whale shark form and it's just done and with wire masking tape and um, I'll just take the banner off there so that you can see 
uh, that a little bit better. So it's actually created just with wire, masking tape and alfoil. So super simple to create the form. You just have to play around with it a little bit. And of course, um, you can use anything to build the body shape up. So styrofoam, wire, masking tape, like I say, um, or you can also use like recycled plastic bottles or glass bottles in there, depending on how heavy you want it to be. So um, the reason I want to show you that is because, of course, if you're doing art for outside, it is super easy to create the form um, and then put the power text on it. So once that has been done, then I'm simply going to create a layer of power text over the top of that and then finish it off with colours. So this is a bottle bunny I did the other week. And so you can see the difference in the surface. You can no longer tell that it is masking tape. So this is done with the Powtex, the 3D sand. It's got some stone art on here, and then it is embellished with the surface. So you can go as detailed as you like with these outdoor pieces. Um, as I say, the person that I was speaking to yesterday was asking about art totems and the possibility of um, making those for outdoors. And the Powtex is just perfect for that. So if you are looking for doing some large artwork, artwork for outdoors, then um, it is awesome. So I'll show you because um, one of the things that I do each year that we have the Perth Craft and Quilt Fair or the trade shows around Australia, we try and make the stand a little bit interesting. And one of the things that we did a few years ago was everyone contributed an element towards a totem. And so that's what you saw on the opening screen was um, one of my elements and also Liesl Collins uh, elements that she created as part of that totem. It stood really tall. I think it was um, around about it must have been two and a half metres tall at least by the time it was finished. So it was quite impressive. So I'm going to try and bring my big bird over here and uh, that way you can see. So it's actually on a post, um, which I should probably show you. But, of course, if you're doing it for outdoors, you want a heavy, heavy base. And what we did for the craft show was we actually created a concrete base for it to sit on. So mine is just sitting on a wooden pole and I can't get it off at the moment, so I'm just going to slip it back on there. And um, so you can bring him over. And so you can see he's actually quite sizable. So it's not a little piece. And so the actual body of the bird has been done with a styrofoam ball. I want to... Um, finish him off with some more um, glitzy details as well. So you're never finished, are you? You always want to add some more bits. Um, and you can see those little bits on his head. That's just wire. And, of course, we've got masking tape feathers there on the back. So if you do want to know how to create something like this, there is a little YouTube video that I have done on um, how to make a quirky bird. And so you can just adapt it to um to whatever you're making and that is quite a good little video so you will find that on the youtube channel um now what i thought i'd do is to show you that it's not just me creating art and um a lot of the time i don't um, do everything that I want to do. I've got so many ideas that I just want to try and get done. Um, but the thing, the funny thing was that another one of the forms I was making while I was coming home is actually a manta ray. So, of course, we also saw those up in at the Ningaloo Reef. So if you do get the opportunity to go up there, the Ningaloo Reef is just absolutely amazing. Uh, at Coral Bay because you walk off the beach and you're riding the coral. So um, on the way home, we actually went, oh, wouldn't it be cool to make a series of three manta rays to go in the garden? And so what we will do is we'll 
make up the maquette, which is basically the little one that I'm making. And then we will actually create a larger form to go in the garden and we'll do a series of three of them. So we'll use more sturdy rod, more sturdy wires, a more sturdy covering, like um, maybe uh, like a paper mache. Um, and then, of course, it will be painted with the Powtex, which will give it durability. I'll finish it with the surfaces and the surface finishes that I want to do, and then uh, finish the whole piece with Easy Varnish. So the great thing with the Easy Varnish, it has also got a liquid wax in it, which really waterproofs your... Um, artwork for outside and everyone everyone's saying hey and um, yeah it's nice to be back on deck so um, yeah hey to all of you as well Mark's just saying car art is that a thing so <laughs> so um, yeah it should should become a thing right <laughs> Okay, so let's get cracking on to some of these other things that I want to show you. So um, as I say, last night I was, I was thinking about today and um, what I wanted to share with you and I have had uh, a number of people that I've seen doing some really lovely things with locally. So one of those people is Sean Roberts. So she is an art teacher at Rockingham um, at Rockingham Beach Primary School, and she has done an amazing artwork. So I'm just going to pop up a couple of images here, and I'm going to talk at the same time as I show you these. So this is actually, um, so it's called A Tangled Web, and it is by Rockingham Beach Primary School. And what they have done is they have created an amazing artwork under the inspiration of Sean Roberts. So um, you can see here that, um, so that's one of the students working to make uh, one of the fish. And um, what it is about is it's about the damage caused by drift net fishing and ghost nets and of course inspired by Sean. So the students, the really interesting thing is that the students are all grades four to six and they made these ama this amazing sculpture out of recycled bottles and Powtex. And you can see in the image that they're actually using the bluish gray there to create them. So the whole sculpture actually weathered some torrential rain because it was created for the Castaways exhibition. And um, so I'll just pop that screen up for you there. And so it was actually created for the Castaways exhibition. And so you can see the finished piece there. And there was a storm that came through and um, it survived that. And this is one of the questions that I do get asked is how durable actually is the Powtex? Well, this piece has now been recreated as a mural in the school quadrangle. So that is just absolutely awesome. So it is still um, living in a different form and it would be super, super, super to actually get Sean on and have a chat with her um, and um, have a look at how that is now. Um, sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to manage my banners and images here. Um, so it would be super to get Sean on and actually have a chat to her about how she used the Powtex with the kids at the school and her experience with that. But you can see the amazing possibilities and so those, that piece was actually created with recycled bottles and so making it even more meaningful for sustainable art and, um, you know, more meaningful to that overall meta-narrative that they were trying to portray in terms of, you know, highlighting the damage caused by fishing. So really super interesting and that um, piece actually took out the People's Choice Award uh, for schools. So very, very excited when I heard that 
um, and that was in 2019 so for castaways so that's one example and i just really wanted to highlight these because these are real people doing real things with um, with the powertex and finding it easy to work with durable it's got longevity so let's have a look at another example and um, we've i've got um, a fantastic example by a very good friend of mine who um, i have spoken to quite a lot around artwork and we've chatted and we've done quite a lot um, with wearable art and just um, we like to um, network and uh, work on ideas together as well and brainstorm and um, the friend of mine is Alana Grant and she is a local artist here in Mandra and she has done quite a lot of work with festivals. So this is, oh, this is Alana's piece, um, so Festival Lights. And again, we actually talked about this for the first time when we were um, creating in uh, at chasm together as part of the chasm open studios and we uh, were there at the same time and she saw me working with the powertex in my artwork and she went oh wow i'm doing this thing for a festival do you think i could use it so um let's take a look at what she's done so this is an image of um, the festival lights now what she did with that was she actually uh, used um, so the the lanterns were covered in seaweed and squid ink designs so very very um, interesting processes and she has really worked very experimentally with the powertex and the pigments in these pieces and through her experimentation she's done so many exciting things with the powertex and come up with some beautiful um, beautiful pieces so we must talk about her wearable art piece one of these days too um, because it is just super so um, yeah I'll just let the cat out of the bag Alana is going to come on with me in a couple of weeks time so not next Friday but the Friday after and she's going to be a guest artist and so you can hear about the work experimentation and some of the things that she's been doing with Powertex other than these wonderful festival lights so I'll just pop up another one so that you can see it here. And uh, so this one is obviously taken in the dark and just gives you a different snapshot of how it looks. And um, it was the, the first piece was exhibited first at the Crab Fest in uh, 2017 and it was called Aquatic Landscape. Now, what I know of Alana, and we have talked about this piece because um, she has just been absolutely astounded by the durability of Powertex and the longevity that it had for this project. So she, she created this piece and... Um, you know, it was exhibited first at Crab Fest, then she recreated another piece for Fairbridge and then for the Stretch Festival and then Eurydice. So not only did it stop there, after that, then it went on for more and more and more. <laughs> and these festival lights, they spanned over several events over a few years and she um, has just kept recreating them into different things. And um, I know that she has been absolutely astounded by the way they have lasted. This is a beautiful picture um, taken up into the trees. I just love that one of the, the lights. And you can see how they look like sea urchins. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So the materials she used, 
uh, you know, she's using that reference of the squid ink and the seaweed from the ocean. And then she's done these on paper lanterns. So they really have that look of urchins and they're just beautiful. And then she's actually hardened them with transparent Powertex. And of course, like I say, um, for full durability, it's then really good to put the easy varnish over the top. And that way, um, yeah, it will it will be durable in storms. And I know, <laughs> I know that these um, these pieces that she created and put outside, they went through rain and storms, and they have weathered so many uh, different um, weather conditions over the years. And so um, you can just see how um, you know incredible it is because these pieces are essentially done with paper and they, they are paper lanterns and they're quite fragile and they're out in the wind, they're out in the weather and they're out in the rain for the duration of these festivals. And like I say, she has said that they have lasted for years. So yeah, really, really, really interesting. So if you have a question about the durability of Powertex and whether it will actually last outside, then you can be assured that um, the Powertex does work. It does do what it says it's going to do, and it is amazing. So like I say, you just do need to give some consideration to the medium. So you need to ensure that you leave it to dry for at least three weeks before you put it outside. So you have to be a little bit prepared. You can't be doing it at last minute and then put it up outside and expect that it's going to survive because it won't have dried properly. So once it has fully dried, um, then you can pop your easy varnish on it and it will, you know, you might want to do a couple of coats of easy varnish, which is like a liquid wax. Um, and it just puts a really good waterproofing layer over the top of the Powtex. All the Powtex colours in the range, so there's 11 different colours. So you've got transparent ranging through a whole range of different colours. Um, all the actual colours in the range are weather, uh, more weatherproof than the transparent. So with the transparent, you do need to ensure that you are doing that varnishing layer, especially if you're working with papers. <laughs> um, so there it is, art for outdoors. I'm just going to have a quick look and see if there are any questions. And um, yeah, so we've just got a few people saying they are stunning. And yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it just gives you a little snapshot of what you can actually do with the Powertex when you think outside of the square and you start creating with it. So, um, both Alana and Sean have done workshops with me. So if you have a trainer near you and you want to learn a little bit more about the Powertex, the easiest way is to do a workshop and actually it will fast track your learning. So whether you're an experienced artist or you're a beginner working with materials, obviously if you're a beginner, then it's going to be super helpful for you to do a workshop. But even if you're an experienced artist, doing a workshop around the Powertex just gives you a much greater understanding of the materials and it will really fast track you into doing some really beautiful experimental work and um, which is what I love. So I love inspiring people to create. I love talking to people who are working outside of the square and I love it when people come into my studio and they have a chat with me about what they are thinking about doing. And um, yeah, it's just super exciting. So Robin as well is just saying, wow, that is a fantastic photo looking up into the trees. I absolutely agree. It is absolutely gorgeous. So there's a little snapshot of what you can do with outdoor art. And um, it would be fabulous if you have a piece that you have created with Powertex. You can actually... Uh, um, you can join the Creative Hub on Facebook 
and uh, which is the Powtex Australia. I'll just put the details up there for you. It's the Powtex Australia um, Creative Hub on Facebook and you can connect with us there. You can share your artworks and I would love to see the things that you have created for outdoors, especially if you've done some big stuff. That would be really, really exciting to see. So um, you can, of course, learn more about Powertex at the website and you will find um, plenty of information there and there's lots of little videos and um, there's over a year of uh, these Friday Lives that you can also access. And most of the time I do do a little demo or I feature some artwork and hopefully give you some very helpful tips and tricks along the way. So I hope that has inspired you all to maybe get on and do some um, outdoor artwork with the Powertex. And even if you're doing like smaller pieces, of course you can put your artwork outside. Um, another thing that you do have to consider is how you are finishing the work with, you, with your colours. And um, so, for example, if you use the Bista on your piece, then you would definitely need to seal that because otherwise it would just wash off um, because it is, um, it's a little bit like a watercolour um, piece. So you would definitely have to put um, a finishing varnish on. Uh, the other consideration would be if you have used the stone art clay in your piece, you would also need to varnish that because essentially the stone art clay is a paper pulp and when you mix it when with the Powertex, it makes a beautiful clay that you can work with. And um, But it, it reduces the properties of the Powertex. And so therefore, you need to weatherproof it with the um, Easy Varnish. So I hope that's been helpful. Alana's just popped on, which is awesome. And she's just saying... Uh, that there are so many ways to use this product and doing the workshop after she made uh, the lanterns helped to make a series of works after that. So, um, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> she's also mentioned someone who um, she knows, so Sarah, who um, suggested the products um, many years before she actually met me. So Alana, wonderful to see you on here. I'm really, really looking forward to catching up and having a chat on air in a couple of weeks. It's going to be super to have you on here with me and we'll just have a chat and, and have a look at some of your superb artwork that you've been working on. And of course, um, Alana also does wearable art and uh, she won the Powtex Award a couple of years back with an amazing piece that she did. So I will have to post that in the group for you to see, but maybe we will touch on that as well next time when we get together with Alana in a couple of weeks time. So um, please ask any questions. I hope for those of you that are considering doing some large works with the Powertex for outdoors, that that has really clarified um, some of the questions. And I am so often asked about the longevity and the durability of Powertex. And so it is just a perfect thing to talk to, talk to you about today. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I hope that it has raised many, many, many things um, and ideas uh, for you to try. So I shall leave you with that thought and really look forward to catching up with you again next week. So ciao for now, everyone. Enjoy creating. Have a great weekend of creativity. Catch up in the group. Show me what you've been doing, what's on your art table this week. I would love to see it. And I will chat to you soon. Ciao.